Hi, my name is Dr. Kenneth Cow of Vital Balance Chiropractic, and this is part one of a group tutorial series. Now, smooth transitions and stable holds, they require good technique. However, to get good technique, you need to learn to train them safely. And this is the key to longevity in pole dancing. Wrist and shoulder injuries are by far the most common injury I see in pole dancers within my clinic, especially due to split grip. Because of this, we'll be covering the details of the technique in exquisite depth. Done right, however, the split grip is ridiculously awesome. It's definitely one of my favorite grips, and it's the basis of a bunch of power moves, spins, and transitions such as the pencil, true flag, apprentice, and cradle spin. In part one of the split grip tutorial, we'll cover the basics of the surprisingly complex technique, and in part two, we'll discuss conditioning and training variations should the grip be too difficult, or if you are rehabilitating an injury. Okay, let's break this down. Here's the pole directly, so that the pole bisects your body, and you're going to stand roughly at doubles distance away from the pole. Place your hands on the pole, arms straight, and make sure to keep your shoulders as level as you can. Okay? What you're going to do is stand up on your toes, keeping your arms straight, and just depress the shoulders, engaging through the lats and the pecs. Take your shoulder blades back and down. By bringing them back and down, it also assists in helping you push your bottom arm and pull with your top arm. To you kind of feel like you're doing this with your arms, squishing your boots. Is that the appropriate term? Anyway. Squeezing your arms, your biceps into your pecs. Go and lift on up, just like that. And really try to maintain that straight posture without tilting, without altering your shoulder position, and without compensating by uh, pulling too hard with the bicep rather than compressing with the shoulder. Now, a really important note is that you must keep especially your bottom arm straight, okay? What I mean by straight is that if your shoulder and your elbow and your wrist are not in perfect alignment, that's an injury waiting to happen. So, most of the time it's in the wrist here, for at least this move, which means that your wrist is deviating one direction or the other. So, when you grip the pole, you'll notice that in order to maintain the straight position, you need to release that first finger, just like that, at the very least, okay? Otherwise, if I'm gripping it this way, you'll notice what's happening to my wrist as it's coming out to the side, and that creates a lot of damage right around here. This is Mary. <laughs> Mary is here because I need a demo how certain elbows actually go into hyperextension when they're extended straight. So in her situation for split grip, she would not get full extension. I would rather have her right about there, slightly bent in order to protect that joint. To get the entire body in a straight line away from the pole, you need to engage the glutes and the hamstrings as well. So once you go up, you want to make that slight high position, extend just a little bit through the glutes and the hands. And of course, we always recommend that you practice both sides for good symmetry. The most common error that I see is reaching too high with the top arm, so that what happens is your body begins to tilt. One of the most common causes of injuries in split grip is collapsing through this bottom arm as you're releasing. They drop the elbow and they just lose support there, which puts a lot of torque around the wrist, damaging the triangular fibrosa area. It's a disc similar to meniscus. To avoid collapsing into that wrist, release the bottom arm first before dismounting, or you can swing your legs away and release both hands. Finally, we have some advanced progressions for you. If you've got a solid mastery of just the basic split grip position, here are some things to take you to the next level. So, the first one is in split grip. You're going to see if you can turn your shoulders both directions and still maintain form. If you're super good, see if you can rotate the shoulder all the way underneath and then return oh, back to control. Okay? That actually goes into the deadlift. Now, the second progression is, and again, only if you feel absolutely certain, uh, you know what you're doing and you're very confident, jump into it. Just like this. Okay? From here, maintaining form, all the joints need to be in exactly the right position right when you hit it, okay? The third progression, and this is the most advanced one, is allowing yourself to break form, okay? You break form and then you fight to regain. So what it looks like is here, we told you, don't reach too high, don't tip your shoulders, don't bend the elbow, now fight for it, until you're back into a nice solid pencil position. 
again, my name is Dr. Kenneth Cow. I hope this tutorial has helped you with your split grip. If you enjoyed it, please like it, please comment, and please subscribe. I plan on releasing more of these videos soon, so if you liked it, uh, there's a lot more content coming. Until then, stay safe, train hard, and uh, we'll just see you next time, huh?